A company could have a very different cost of goods sold and ending inventory balance based on whether it uses FIFO, LIFO, or the weighted average cost method to value its inventory. So let's do an example. Let's say you're a retailer for an item called the smart toilet. This is a new exciting type of toilet where it's got Wi-Fi. It's got everything you need for that special moment when you are on the toilet. So you've got zero inventory as of January 1st, 2022. Then you're going to make some inventory purchases during January, which I'll show you in a moment. And then you're going to sell 50 units of the smart toilet on January 31st, 2022. And that's where I'm going to show you how cost of goods sold is calculated for FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average cost. And then we will We'll compare so let's get to our purchases so we've got on january 5th we make our first purchase uh, we purchased 40 units of the smart toilet at 1200 dollars per unit so we got 40 units 1200 dollars that's 48 thousand dollar purchase on january 5th then january 14th we buy an additional 30 units of the smart toilet 1300 dollars a unit so the price went up 39 grand we spend and then on january 29th we make our third purchase we buy an additional 80 units at 1600 dollars a unit for 128 grand total so if we look at all three purchases and we haven't made any sales yet we're not going to make a sale until january 31st so we have bought 150 units okay and we've paid a grand total of 215 thousand dollars so let's get into calculating cost of goods sold so we'll start with FIFO. Remember, FIFO is first in, first out. We have sold 50 units. So the first ones we're going to expense are our first purchases, which we have from January 5th. We bought 40 units. So we're going to have 40, 40 times 1,200 per unit. Okay, But that's only 40 units, and we sold 50. We sold 50 units. So we've got to take 10 out of this set of purchases from January 14th. Okay, so plus 10 times, and that's $1,300 we paid uh, per unit on that date. So we got 40 units at $1,200 a unit plus 10 units at $1,300 a unit. That comes out to a total of $61,000 for cost of goods sold if we were to use FIFO. Okay, so the ending inventory would be the total cost, right? Our total cost minus that cost of goods sold. So 215,000 minus 61,000 is 154,000. So that would be the ending inventory balance. After we've sold these units on January 31st, if you made a balance sheet, it would say inventory balance of 154,000. Another way you could calculate the ending inventory balance is you could say, well, there's 20 of these units, 20 of those 30 remaining in inventory. So 20 times 1300 plus the 80 times 1600. So basically the units that have not been expensed yet, have not yet flown through cost of goods sold. Now, LIFO, we're going to do LIFO next. So LIFO, last in, first out. So the most recent purchases are going to go through cost of goods sold first. We sold 50 units. So 50 of these 80. So we're going to have, this is going to be simple. We just take 50 times 1,600. And that's going to give us 80,000 for cost of goods sold. Notice that cost of goods sold is higher with LIFO. It won't always be like that, but in this case, we are in a period of rising prices. Okay, so it went from 1200 to 1300 to 1600. When it is a period of rising prices, when prices are going up, it's an inflationary environment, then the FIFO method is gonna result in the lowest cost of goods sold and thus the highest net income. Okay, and LIFO, when prices are going to going up, LIFO is going to lead to the highest cost of goods sold and therefore the lowest net income. Okay, so remember, high cost of goods sold, so higher cost of goods sold, when LIFO means lower net income. FIFO, we get the lower cost of goods sold, so we're going to have higher net income. So if you're comparing two companies and prices were going up, all else equal, the one with FIFO is going to report higher net income. Okay, if prices have been rising, if it's an inflationary environment. And weighted average cost method is, is always going to be in the middle. It's going to be in the middle of these two. And I'll, I'll show you how to calculate that now. So let's get to the weighted average cost method. Oh, and by the way, just to make sure you understand, these each line is always going to add up to 215000 I'm talking about each row here. Okay, because that's that's the total amount of cost. We're trying to figure out how much that 215000 goes to COGS and how much goes to ending inventory balance. So 61,000 plus 154, that's 215. 80 plus 135, that's 215, okay? Now, 
Weighted average method, we have to calculate a weighted average cost per unit. So we take the total cost, 215,000, divided by the total number of units purchased, 150, gives us $1,433.33. So we sold 50 units, if you remember. Okay, so we're going to have for right here, well, let me change colors. Back, we'll do green. So weighted average is going to be 50 times 1,000. 433 and 33 cents, okay, to give us $71,667. I rounded to the nearest dollar there, okay, and again, these two together add up to $215,000. So remember, this is important. When you have rising prices, which was the example that we had here, the prices were going up and up over time, a LIFO is going to result in the highest cost of goods sold, okay, and therefore also the lowest net income okay fifo okay if we have if we have declining prices okay if so if prices are going down then fifo would result in the highest cost of goods sold okay think about it conceptually if prices are going up let's go back to the rising prices the inflationary scenario if prices are going up and we're pulling from the most recent purchases first we're going to have the highest prices going through cost of goods sold first and remember weighted average cost is always going to be in the middle in terms of the cost of goods sold. But inflationary environment, rising prices, LIFO, highest cost of goods sold, lowest net income, and FIFO would be the reverse.